Hello, and welcome to this video explaining how to use the Startup Company Valuation and Dilution Calculator. My name is Carter Mackley. I'm a startup company lawyer. I prepared this spreadsheet to help my clients analyze the effect of multiple capital raises on their ownership percentage in the company. Founders can use this spreadsheet to set the price of their early capital raises while taking into account the dilutive effect of later capital raises. So, let's get started with an overview of the spreadsheet. This spreadsheet shows a hypothetical company that expects four financing rounds beyond the founder round. Row 6 indicates the rounds. So, for example, the A round or founder round is in column C through F and goes down here. The B round is in columns G through J and goes down here and it goes so on and so forth for five more rounds. Here's the E round at the very end. You have to move the cursor over to see him. Row 8 shows the amount raised or that you project to be raised in each successive round and then it shows right here it shows the percentage of the company taken by that round uh, as of that point in time. So for example this shows that the seed round which was for $50,000 took 10% of the company on a post money basis. This means percent of the fully diluted capitalization of the company. And moving on you can see this round was a million dollars for 10% of the company, 10 million dollars for 20% of the company, and 40 million dollars for 10% of the company price per share and the pre-money valuation and post-money valuation for each round are shown in these rows. So the price per share was was uh, two tenths percent here, five cents here, and as you can see the price per share and pre-money valuations steadily increased through each successive round which is ideal, ideally how it happens. The pre-money valuation for the last round was $360 million, or is $360 million for this example. So, to use this round, or to use this spreadsheet, you um, first need to understand that all the cells in blue can be edited by you to adapt to your situation. So um, these cells for example show the percentages you'd input the percentages for each of the shareholders in the founder round. These cells here you indicate the percentages for the subsequent rounds um, and here you show you indicate based on your projections the amount that you want to raise. So for example say you want to raise a hundred thousand in your seed round and then you want to see what happens if you give that 15% of the company which would change the pre-money valuation. See this pre-money valuation is 566 million or, or 566,000. If your investor thinks that's too high you might have to go up, give them more of the company, take it down to 400 or even. But if you've projected your rounds in the future you can see what's going to happen to your ultimate share ownership as you change those values. So if I, if I change, for example, this value here to 25, pre-money valuation goes down, and it, your ownership percentages also went down. That's how that works. To get started, you need to make this area here reflect how you want to set up your company or reflect how it actually is if you've already been going for a while. Um, so you might start by typing in your name here. So you have a partner, you type in your partner's name. Maybe this is your chief financial officer you gave 5% of the company to in stock options.
everyone in this round should be those that are earning their equity for services people that paid made a financial investment and paid cash for their stock should be in the seed round and you should separate the rounds by price paid so if a group of shareholders paid a different price they should be in a different round so you can analyze the pre-money valuation for each round to make this fit your company you may need to delete some of these so for example if you want to delete that employee you'd left click on the row number here that would select the whole row and you'd right click and hit delete and the totals and everything adjust now notice what happens when you do that is the percentage is no longer no longer equals 100 and you get an error message down here so if you did that you would need to adjust these percentages so that it comes back up to 100 you might give this founder an extra percentage need another percentage so let's give this founder an extra percentage and now you're back to 100 and the error signal goes away this number here should reflect total shares allocated to the founder round plus the stock option plan and then these percentages if that's true and you've picked this number right then you pick these percentages and they will once you've selected these percentages it'll fill in the number of units and the dollars the dollars will equal what you have selected for the founder round so for example if we change this to 30,000 you can see the number the total changes here and everything changes along here so you're likely going to need or you may need to add shareholders here to add a shareholder click on the row number to select the whole row below where you want to add a new one so in this case we left click on the contractor then we right click we hit insert inserts a new blank row so we're going to move up this key employees assuming that's the one you want to make an additional entry for right click now you hit copy and go back down and left click on the empty row and hit paste paste on that first icon and hit return now you got a new employee and the numbers go up you see we have to adjust those so let's put key employee number two and we're gonna have to get these percentages back down so let's take this to 37 how you can adjust those totals and get them to where you want to be um, for your following rounds um, you don't usually know in advance who how many investors that you're going to have so typically you might just want to put zero in all these other columns or actually just delete the rows and just indicate one investor but make sure however many investors you split it up into that you have the totals 100 because if you don't total to 100 you'll get an error signal oops there we go but I did give you the option of splitting into six investors just in case you want to analyze the dilutive effect of um, if you have an idea who your investors might be and you want to analyze the dilutive effect so for example this this seed round here was split into two investors at 16 40 percent here they had 15 and 10 percent of the company by the time you get to the last round they're down to nine and six percent of the company respectively that's just a word about how pre-money valuation and post-money valuation is calculated when you're about ready to uh, make your seed round and you're trying to decide how many how much of the company to allocate to this round for one you need to the whole idea here is that you're going to project into the future as much as possible and try and project all the way to when there'll be an exit and project each round and the percentage that you're going to allocate to it and by adjusting these percentages you can get make sure that you get reasonable percentages all the way through reasonable valuations all the 
the way through. And most importantly, that you don't basically give too much away in the first round. Let's make that bring that back down to maybe 15. money valuation, once you input the amount that you desire to raise, and you know how much you're going to give or allocate for that raise, so it says that 15% of the company will be owned by the shareholders who invest this $50,000. The, the post money valuation is simply this value divided by this value, and if you click on this cell, that's what it shows. It shows that I8 is divided by J8, I8 here divided by J8, which gives you the post money valuation of $333,000 in this case. The pre-money valuation is simply this value, I11, minus this value, I8, which is the amount raised. So that makes sense since the, comp the value of the company before you make the investment is, plus the amount of the investment is the post money valuation. Pre-money valuation is a metric that allows investors to know uh, what they're basically paying for their investment without needing to know how many shares are outstanding. And that's why the pre-money valuation metric is used. I think that about covers everything. Just be aware that although this looks like a regular capitalization table for multiple rounds, you can't use this spreadsheet as a regular capitalization table because the formulas are backwards. Normally, for a normal capitalization table, you'd put in the number of units, and based on the share price, that would, so the spreadsheet would calculate dollars invested and the percentages. This is designed to be backwards, so you'd need to use a different spreadsheet. And if you ever want to see where you, if you're clicking on a cell and it shows that it's a formula, by because there's an equal sign here, you know that you don't want to be putting in a value there, it's going to be changing the formula. So if you click on this cell, you can see it's just a number. In this case, it's 3%. Since so it's just a number, you can be editing there. All right, well, thanks for watching. Um, this video about how to use the startup company valuation and dilution calculator, you can find copies and download them at um, www.startuplawtalk.com. Please post any copies comments or questions on the website or email me at carter.mackley at mackleylaw.com. Thank you.